Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys today with Bernie DeLay, who's going to talk today about debug uh, protocols. As engineers are working on uh, some complex designs here, particularly uh, complex SOCs, they're dealing with a lot of protocols. What do they have to be aware of and where do they really run into problems? Okay, so let's, let's start sort of at the basic level. We'll start at the IP level. We'll grow up sort of the SOC level. So let's, let's talk about the IP level problem first. Uh, to get context to some of the issues you have when you're doing protocol verification. So if you take a, something like a USB a host, you end up with a, a layered protocol. You have a physical layer where you have ordered sets coming in, you have a link layer, you have a packet that's going into that link layer that come from a protocol layer that has some transfers coming in. So you have different levels of abstraction involved in a protocol like this. It's not like before we maybe had a single layered bus like AXI or AHB where things weren't too complicated. Things are much more complicated now because of this layering. At least that's one aspect that comes into play when we're talking about protocol debug. In the past, what you may have done is, you know, maybe you looked at the signals down here and did signal level debug looking at the pins. You know, if you're lucky, you had some access to the actual VIP itself and you probably put some messages coming out to sort of tell you information about what's going on. So you can sort of understand the flow. The problem is it's really hard to understand the relationships between these layers, which when you're doing debug is actually key. So if I have something like USB here, I have these transfers coming in. Well, they get abstracted down in the layering. The transfers actually go into transactions here, okay, inside the protocol layer, which make it into packets, which make it down the order sets. You start going, okay, Things can get out of order. I may be able to put in several of these transfers into this upper layer, and it'll get broken down into the sub objects, and things might get delayed. You might get pushed back. Maybe the other end isn't ready to go, things like that. So you now have to understand a new relationship. Is the, what you're dealing with here the performance? Is it the function? What are you trying to get to in debug? Well, initially, your problem is the functionality. Performance is going to come later when we start looking at the subsystem level. Initially, your big problem is I put in a transfer and it did never come out and go over to my device correctly. Now you have to start debugging it. So I started looking at signals, trying to figure it out, but I quickly realized I need to know that these series of ordered sets okay, were abstracted from this packet, which is actually a series of packets that was in this transaction that, you know, was related to a much larger transfer. All these things get broken down through a parent-child relationship. So that's actually the key you need to know is what's the relationship. When you do debug, I want to know for this transfer up here, okay, which transactions, transactions A and B, and packets, you know, uh, W through Z out here, made up with these ordered sets because things can be out of order as you go down the stack. And what's, what's the problem that most people run into when they're doing this? Making that relationship, okay? You've got a whole bunch of ordered sets here, but you may say A is followed by Z, which is followed by C, which is followed by D, which is followed by W, and these are different packets or different transactions, and they're all out of order. So you can't just look at this and understand what's going on. I've got to say, for A, it was this ordered set, this packet over here, this transaction over here, and maybe it was actually this transfer over here. Because remember, what I'm writing here in a test bench is transfers. So you've written your test bench in that form, and I need to debug what's going on. Is it obvious when you get it right, and is it obvious when you get it wrong? <laughs> Good question, actually. Uh, so basically, if you get, it, get, if you get an error, What's going to happen is you probably won't get the data back into the payload that went from your host into your device. So when your scoreboard will ultimately check and see that, ah, they didn't match. The, the thing is, that's really great when it matches, but when they don't match, you have to understand which layer did I go wrong at. And that's where the parent-child comes in, understanding how it got broke down so you can debug that actual scoreboarding error, because you're probably doing data checking at the scoreboarding level, which is really what you have over here is something like AHB, which is now our AXI, you know, which is the other problem you have when you're doing IP level verification, because you're really not talking about one protocol, you're talking about two. 
Now I've got to be able to visualize this kind of information for multiple protocols at once. So when you talk about protocol debug, there's these parent-child relationships maybe that you have to understand for one protocol. Just as important is, okay, what was going on in this AHB bus over here? Because that's ultimately what's being read, you're reading out of the device DUT in the end. So now I need to understand, okay, here were these AHB transactions. Maybe they were the registered reads. And was the problem on this side, reading the registers? Was the problem on this side, the breakdown of all the transfers down into packets and ordered sets and all that? So it's a case of isolation having visibility into all that that's key. So you want something that gives you that visibility. USB has been around for quite a while. We're now into USB-C. Is there any difference between one type and another, or is it still the, the same debug process? It, it just gets more complicated because you, the real thing is when you start doing things like instead of host and device, you go on the go. Okay, what happens on the go? This can play both roles. Now the thing goes back and forth in both directions, which again, it's just another layer of complexity where you need to understand the relationships between the protocol. So what you really need is an environment that you can visualize things at the protocol level. Because that's the other key. If I was sitting down here doing things at the signal level or even with messages, understanding a complex environment just <laughs> doesn't work anymore. You really need to have some sort of tools, some sort of graphical interface that allows you to see it in, in the terms that you're talking. Transfers, transactions, and packets, or AXI transactions, or AHB transactions over here. And so, the, the other key to this whole thing is since things can get out of order, you have concurrency to worry about. So I can have a number of outstanding transfers and easily identifying that maybe things, uh, maybe I expected no blockages. All these transfers were supposed to just happen, right? Okay, now I need to understand uh, the fact that maybe there was like three or four outstanding ones. And I only expected maybe one, maybe two. You want, need an easy way to identify how many outstanding transactions there are. Simple things in debug, like how you represent this. I drew this all horizontal. Engineers sort of think that way. In reality, that's not the way you want to visualize things when it comes to the outstanding concurrent transactions. What you really want to see is overlapping vertical. And why vertical is nice is I can, you can easily see that there's like three outstanding transfers. The other thing about this is anybody that's worked in the lab, you're actually familiar with this because that's a hardware lab view of the world. USB is a fairly well-defined protocol. Um, it, it's been well characterized. Everybody understands what, what goes next to it, what causes problems. But as you start getting into very complex chips, that's not necessarily the case, particularly when you start dealing with um, out-of-order uh, transactions, uh, things that could be affected from a, a memory that's in contention from something else. How do you deal with that in debug? Okay, let's, let's look at the root cause of what probably happened. I'd like to extend our problem here, okay? We're going to extend our USB problem now more into a subsystem idea of what the world's like. So this AHB here really is connected to some sort of interconnect out here. And it's just one of a number of devices hanging off that with maybe a number of masters. It could be DMA, you know, it could be a, uh, a CPU, you know, things like that coming off of this interconnect, okay? So you have this interconnect here with multiple masters and multiple slaves. And what you now have to start understanding is the actual thing that started this transfer probably happened over here. You know, maybe the data was coming from some sort of DMA transfer from a memory out here. Okay, so maybe I have like DDR hanging off my interconnect out here. Now, really there's a DDR controller with DDR hanging off that, but I'll extract that away and just say there's DDR hanging out here. The data for this USB transfer maybe is coming from this DDR memory going through the interconnect over to this device. Now I'm trying to read it out the host. Now I have another set of problems to understand. For one thing, I need to visualize what this memory looks like. From a test bench perspective, um, let's say this is like a particular address. Things aren't really this simple. Uh, but let's just pretend there for a second <laughs> that I only have addresses like that with some sort of data coming along here uh, on those addresses out there. Um, maybe the CPU is written in through here, filled up this DDR. Now I'm going to do a DMA transfer. I need now to understand what the contents are of that DDR. So I need a way of visualizing your memory space out here. 
Unfortunately, things in that memory happen in multiple ways when we get into test benches. Because test bench writers like to do you know, nifty things through back doors uh, when they're writing their test benches. So you need to understand the concept on this memory of what came in through the front door on the bus. Okay, so the DDR controller wrote some stuff out there. Oh, maybe you need, you know, test bench was doing some tricks and they came in through the back door. So you need to understand that it came in through the back door. Oh, maybe it was uh, like a big file system out here. They, did, they loaded this up with a big file on it. Part of your debug problem in reality to make it easy is understanding how these got to a specific value. So you want to do things like visualize it, maybe different colors to understand front doors from back doors. Uh, you know, uh, files, you know, virtual fill patterns, things like that. So you want to understand and have a way of recognizing how that got to a value. Because when you're doing a debug, remember we're in a big test bench environment here, right? The test bench on top of this is, is likely doing some funky things that maybe you wanted to do, maybe you didn't uh, want it to do. So understanding how this memory got initialized, maybe it was supposed to do a file operation, loaded up some really cool values out here, and ultimately transfer it out this USB. Maybe though there was some something wrong in my interconnect. Okay? And some write actually got through here and actually wrote to this value instead of this file operation through the back door. Might mean there's something wrong. Could be in the interconnect. Could it be in the you know the CPU where you're controlling that, maybe you replaced it with AXI, did something wrong in your test bench. So knowing that this value and how it got there in the debug cycle is is, is very important for us. Does this get affected at all by different process nodes? So if you're moving down to 16, 14 nanometers, the wires are thinner. Is that going to affect what you're doing here? It doesn't affect it from an RTL simulation point of view, but what it affects is your performance expectancies of this interconnect. Now we're sort of bridging into performance debug. Okay. There was some expectation that the latency or throughput of this interconnect was some value. If I didn't meet that, I need to know that. So now when I'm talking about understanding interconnect latency, I've got yet another piece of information I need to know that's, that's pretty complicated. So now I need something that bridges across, let's say it's going that DMA, probably also understanding the CPU out here, it's understanding this DDR controller, it's understanding this, so I need a monitor, a system level monitor to understand what's happening across that bus, okay? And so really what you're getting into here is very sophisticated traffic flow and prioritization, right? Correct, correct. So there's two aspects to that. You need to understand, let's say uh, this is a, a coherent protocol like ACE, okay? Now I need to understand, you know, what are my caching mechanisms and all this, that I have checks that are in here to, to validate those cache. Maybe there's some snoop reads and writes going on on it, understand those. But you also need, though, to understand from a performance perspective, what was my latency, let's say, from this CPU over to this DDR controller? Because maybe the real issue was, you know, I just wasn't getting the throughput that I expected out of this. This monitor now has to give me information about latency and throughput in the end. And I need to be able to visualize that because what I really want to do, I want to be able to see that this transfer right here, okay, I want to see that, that was the particular transfer that didn't, that exceeded my latency expectations. So, okay, what was happening when that happened? How does it relate, does this bus relate to this bus down here or to this bus? So you need the other Interesting thing is all this has to be synchronized together to understand what's going on. Even for things like performance, I need to be able to have a whole synchronized system to understand it. So you're actually trying to figure out not only how traffic moves through here, but also how traffic flows into this as well, right? So you're, you're dealing with, a, for example, an IoT device. And this should be a theoretically a, a standard type of IP, but it's really not so standard when you start putting it into the device in context. Right. The thing is, they're all standards here uh, on all these buses, but how they play together is, is really the secret sauce these guys are doing, right? All, all your SOC guys and all that, their secret sauce is not in the USB or in the AXI or the DDR. Their secret sauce is how that system goes together. 
And that's the, the problem they're actually trying to debug now. You, know, you do have to fall back on traditional means. I mean, it, you're not going to do everything at the highest level of abstraction, but that's where you should start. Because if you can debug at this level, you, you know, you don't have to break down and understand, you know, pin level wiggling or maybe UVM messaging and things like that. I'm not saying these aren't needed, but you should start at the highest level of abstraction possible when you're doing debug. And usually that's in context of the protocol. People keep thinking that a lot of this stuff is reusable. Is this as reusable as it used to be, or is it getting harder? Um, at the individual level, it's definitely reusable. So by that I mean by the individual protocol level, it's reusable. You know, the stuff you do for a host, we can can this all up. We can, we can have a tool that, that, you know, visualizes what's going on there. Same for the EHB, same for your DDR, and even for your latency, okay? At the SOC level, you can to a degree. By that I mean you need some sort of environment that you can visualize all these things in at once. In reality, nowadays you're sort of limited more by your screen size than anything, so we all have these massive monitors <laughs> on all of our desks where we can actually visualize all these individual protocols together in time. So, uh, you know, the, the where you sort of bridge, why it's sort of kind of, is you, I get some information about the monitor between buses, but it's, it's tough to understand all the way back here from this AXI all the way over to this USB. You sort of have to do that tracing problem where you trace through the whole thing. Which is the optimization of the performance and whatever else you're trying to get out of the system, right? Right, that's where, and that's where, that's where performance comes in. That's only one part of it. You can still have just a general fault bug that, that gets you there. So you start out, you get all the faults out. Then you sort of go from fault analysis to things like performance analysis after that. No use doing performance until I've got all the faults out of it. So you'll basically get all the faults in your test bench figured out. Then you'll probably run some sort of performance metric simulations to understand your throughput latency issues after that. This ideally, these tests tie back into some, you know, your platform exploration tools. So you should have gotten those uh, constraints on the overall system performance, probably from the system architects, because they've usually done this in a virtual environment beforehand and define what the overall latencies and throughput numbers should be for each one of these areas. And those are the actual checks you end up embedding in here to understand that I've met the things or not. Do people get better at this as time goes on, or is, is USB still a problem in advanced chips? Um, I think they get better. The thing is, USB isn't static. I mean, you've mentioned, I think, you know, USB continues to, to evolve 3.1, Type-C connectors, power delivery. The thing about protocols is they aren't static. USB, PCIe, we're up to Gen 4 someday, you know, the 0.7 version of the spec, but every one of these things uh, has a lifetime that continues on. Uh, so the problem is, in protocol debug, it's a very exploding space. You have a lot of protocols that we're adding every day on, on it. Then you, we never get rid of anything. We always keep it and keep advancing it. I shouldn't say we never, but it's a very long tail on protocol debug out there. So the space for debug of protocols is, is expanding. And that's actually why this is important, is because we started out in a pretty small, simple space. And, you know, we went to the SOC space, and then, oh, even at the SOC level, the protocol versions continue to evolve. Bernie Delay, thanks for a great explanation. Hey, thank you, and I appreciate the time to show you a little bit about protocol debug, what the difficulties are, and, and hopefully then you can uh, look to see how you can solve those.